Okay, we're going to start this hour with a closer look at how the coronavirus is spreading across the country. Uh, in Illinois, Governor uh, J.B. Pritzker extending a stay-at-home order through the end of April, while the state's uh, hospitals plead for more supplies. Outside New York, Illinois, now one of the hardest-hit states with roughly 7,000 known infections and more than 100 deaths. Also joining us right now on the phone to talk about this is Illinois Senator Richard Durbin. He's also the Democratic whip. Good morning to you, Senator. Um, let's just talk about, well, let me ask you, where, where, Senator, where are you located right now? I'm in my home in Springfield uh, with my wife. We're doing what we're uh, being instructed to do across America, stay home. Uh, and uh, we're trying our darndest uh, to stop what is a raging infection in, in the country and certainly in our state. We anticipate the numbers that we had just a day ago are likely to triple in terms of the number of infections by next week. So uh, this is a critical moment. Uh, we are nearing that uh, time where if we can so-called flatten the curve, uh, we may bring this to an end sooner rather than later. And, Senator, just so I understand, are, are, are you of the view that, that your hospitals and, and, and medical care professionals are prepared and have, have enough stuff or not? Uh, let me tell you, first, my heart goes out to every single one of them and our first responders, responders who list, are risking their lives every single day for us. But no, I'm afraid we are not where we need to be. Uh, I've worked with the governor, the Department of Defense the, uh, has come in and put in a 3,000 bed hospital facility at the McCormick Place, a convention uh, gathering place in Chicago. We are begging, pleading, scratching around in every way, shape, or form uh, to bring in the protective equipment that we need. I spoke to the governor a couple of days ago, and he said to me, I feel like a shipping clerk. I'm calling the CEOs of major airlines and begging them for cargo planes from China to bring in this equipment. Our uh, national stockpile is uh, near depletion at this point, and we need to replenish it uh, desperately uh, in large numbers. Uh, Illinois may be next. I hope it isn't after New York, but it may be next. And we're going to do our darndest to bring in everything we need to protect our health care workers. Uh, Senator, one of the big questions that I think everybody across this country now has is how long this goes on for, um, not just because of the, the, the health crisis, which is clearly a crisis, uh, but to the extent that it becomes a financial crisis. What's your expectation? What do you think the, the view is among your, your colleagues and peers in Washington right now about, about the window, about the duration? Because I think that investors and everybody else, that, uh, small businesses, they're, they're all trying to figure that out. And some people look at New York, but then you start seeing hot spots like Chicago or, or, or Miami or other places which will have their own curve, and they start thinking maybe this is going to go on longer than, than maybe they had anticipated. What's your expectation? Well, first, let me tell you, I hope the politician class, and I'm part of it, will show a little humility here and defer to the people who are experts, uh, experts in the treatment of those who are infected, experts in public health. Uh, and to be honest with you, they give us mixed signals. Uh, I'm hoping uh, that we flatten the curve and see this come to an end. I mean, consider the fact that it, that it started in China, and China now seems to have at least uh, turned uh, into a new aspect of this where people are starting to gather in public in smaller groups. Uh, but the, the advice that I've received or watched and listened to so far suggests that we're naive to believe that this is going to end two right. weeks or four weeks. Uh, it is going to take longer, and we may find ourselves gradually moving back into normalcy. But it isn't going to be the crack well, let me, of a gun in an you, opening day it, baseball game. Senator, Senator, if this does take longer, um, the question is, does the $2 trillion stimulus package that's, that's now in the books, is that going to be enough? And if it isn't, are you prepared uh, to vote in favor of more? Well, let me, let me tell you, I'm prepared to vote for more, period. Uh, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, consider the fact that when we get into a war, we're in it to win it. Uh, we spend whatever is necessary. <clears throat> we don't say, well, we're going to budget $2 trillion for this war. Let's see how it turns out. We stay there till we win. What we're dealing with here, the prospect of 100,000 people losing their lives to this infection in America, is double the amount, more than double the amount that we lost in Vietnam in that long, long, bloody war. Right. So in terms of fighting this war to victory, we will. And this senator is going to be voting for the, the money that's needed for our health care, as well as for the people, the working families across America. Well, 
Senator, let me ask you a question about bailouts then, because we, we are in the midst of bailing out uh, the airline industry. You have a major airline carrier, of course, uh, in your home state. Um, there is uh, two views on this. One is it's not the airline's fault. The government's doing this. Everybody should be bailed out, not just the employees, but also the shareholders. Uh, there's another view, which is you can keep the airline running, uh, keep the planes in the air, keep the employees uh, on the payroll, but you don't necessarily need to, to save the shareholders. What's your view? Well, well I, I can tell you that my view is, first and foremost, that I'm worried about the, the workers, the pilots, the flight attendants, the, the people in charge of maintenance. Uh, all of these people uh, are, have just been devastated by what's happened over the last several weeks. I've been a passenger a couple times in the last few weeks on these empty planes. People just aren't coming out to fly, and you can understand why. It's not smart from a health point, uh, point of right. view. Uh, and I think it's a major industry uh, for us, in, uh, not just in Illinois, but across the nation. Uh, so we tried with this CARES bill, with this rescue bill, $2 trillion rescue bill, not just to be there for airlines, but for companies large and small that, that want to see their way through this and, and come out on the other side uh, in a positive way with the future. So, no, I wouldn't confine it to airlines, but I'll tell you whether that shareholder you're referring to is – a proprietor who's got a family restaurant that they've had in the family for 20 years. I want to do my darndest to make sure they're back in business when this comes to an end. No, I, I understand that. Uh, but, Senator, I think that there's going to be recriminations and finger-pointing when this is all over. And the question that I'm asking you is whether shareholders of airlines should be rescued in this case and also whether there should be strings attached to these rescue efforts. For example, there was a report just yesterday that showed that the airlines had been asked repeatedly for the past decade to actually uh, have contact information for all passengers so that if there was a pandemic like this, that you could do tracing. And they not only resisted, but lobbied uh, against that over and over again, including in this most recent bill. And so my question to you is when the public looks back at this and says, what did you do, Senator, to actually change the dynamic uh, do you believe by rescuing them with no strings attached that you have done that? Can, can you justify well, I, that to, to, your, uh, to the taxpayers and to the citizens of this country? I think you put four words in there that are significant and not necessarily accurate with no strings attached. We've attached a lot of strings uh, in terms of how this money is going to be spent and how these airlines are going to conduct their business after we see an end to this. And keep in mind that the people who are in this business believe it's going to be a matter of 12 months, 18 months, maybe longer before airlines return to one, where they once were. To say that we're rescuing shareholders, uh, you know, these stock prices are taking a beating. Uh, and I don't think there's any rescue that's come through <clears throat> for the shareholders yet. Let's talk about the basic economy of America, the strength of the American economy. And if we don't stand up now, as we should, and fight this war on behalf of uh, those businesses, large and small, that need to be back in business, then we're going to return to an empty battlefield where we can declare a victory, but not much. But the shareholder, hold on. Senator, Senator, just so we're clear, the shareholders of the airlines are going to be rescued. Meanwhile, <laughs> The shareholders of small businesses, oftentimes the proprietors, are not. I just let's be clear you. about what's you know, happening here. You know what, you, well, let, let's be clear too. You've got to understand that the Rubio Cardin approach, a bipartisan agreement that uh, they put together over weeks of hard work, uh, has been established to provide forgiven loans to small businesses across America. Uh, that is the right thing to do so they can maintain payroll, pay the benefits for their employees, pay their utilities and rent, and be there on the other side. So to say we're just in it for the when big so point, many When so many you, I'm restaurants I'm not, I'm go out of business, people. when so many restaurants, Senator, restaurants, restaurants, hotel companies, there will be bankruptcies. They're going to, it's going to be littered with bankruptcies. The shareholders are going to be wiped out. The airline shareholders will not. I'm just trying to understand how you make that distinction. Well, Mick, we're doing, frankly, we haven't made the distinction. We've said small businesses and large ones alike have a fighting chance to get the help they need to, to survive this. And you are right. At the end of the day, some will not. But, damn it, we're going to do our, our very best as a nation to get the business back in business, business of America back in business. And in terms of small businesses and workers and large uh, corporations, some of them may not make it. You know, I, I know that. That's a reality. But we're doing our best on a bipartisan basis to be there. 
Hey, Senator, in terms of the airlines, just uh, what they're given and what they're granted, I believe it's up to the discretion of the Treasury Secretary to decide if they are handing out additional loans, if the United States government will be a shareholder in the companies as a result, if they'll take any sort of position in the company. The Wall Street Journal had an editorial piece that they raised the question about whether or not if the government does take a stake, obviously you want to protect the workers. You want to make sure that the taxpayer gets a return if there is some sort of loan that's been given out, that they get uh, to share in the upside of that as well. Um, but the journal raised the question about whether or not that should be a silent stake. Uh, if you are suddenly allowing any sort of political weighing in to say what happens next with the airlines after that, that could be a very different situation. How, how, how would you come down on that? Again, I think it's the discretion of the Treasury Secretary, but if you got a say in it, uh, what, what would you think the, the government should be doing in terms of taking a stake and whether that's a stake that has a vote or is a silent vote? Well, let's, let's take uh, history as a guide here. When President Obama faced the recession and decided that we needed a stimulus package, one of the things along the way, and I, I can't remember the exact editorial position of the Wall Street Journal, but one of the questions was, would we step in and save the automobile industry in the United States or just let them all go bankrupt? And the president made a decision, which I totally supported, said, we're stepping in. There's too much at stake here in terms of jobs, in terms of the future of our economy. Uh, I'm not sure what the mechanism is, whether it means that the government is going to take a share uh, in the future to make sure that these corporations return. I don't think there's any uh, blame uh, to auto companies today that came back in business and have done well for themselves and their workers in the American economy. From my point of view, let's do what it takes to get this economy back on its feet. You know, for goodness sakes, the United States and the people who live here count on us establishing an com economy that creates jobs. And I, I'm, I'm not for this kind of a pure approach which says government hands off. Let's see what happens. Let, let's toss the cards on the table and see who wins. I don't buy that. When we pass this $2.2 trillion uh, bill with an overwhelming bipartisan vote, we said we're going to step in, Democrats and Republicans, do what it takes.